back to the real number system. In this video, we're going to talk about multiplication and division with rational numbers. So let's get started. We begin by looking at our models for our rational numbers. So first, we have multiplication as repeated addition. We can use our area model for fractions to demonstrate multiplication as repeated addition. In part A, we have 3 times 3 fourths. That means I'm going to draw a circle and shade 3 fourths of that circle. Then I'll repeat this 3 times. So here's my first circle with 3 fourths of the circle shaded. Here's my second circle with three-fourths of the circle shaded. And here's my last circle with three-fourths of the circle shaded. So I have three-fourths plus three-fourths plus three-fourths. The denominators are the same, so I can add the numerators. Three plus three plus three is nine, and bring across that denominator so we have nine-fourths. Also, you can count the pieces that are shaded. So starting with the first circle, I have one, two, three pieces. In the next circle, four, five, six pieces shaded. And in the last circle, seven, eight, nine pieces shaded. My circle is divided into fourths, and so I have nine fourths. We can change nine fourths to a mixed number like we did in the last section by dividing. I could also use pictures. Since my denominator is four, I'm going to divide my circle into four parts. And I'm gonna start shading and counting my parts. So I have one, two, three, four. Draw another circle, divide it into four parts, and continue counting. Five, six, seven, eight. And draw another circle, divide it into four parts, and continue counting, nine. Now I have 9 fourths shaded. So notice I have two holes, and in the last circle I have one out of four parts shaded. As a mixed number, our answer would be two and one fourth. Let's look at part B. We have four times two thirds. So I'll draw a circle and shade two thirds of it. I'll repeat this four times. Here's my first circle with two-thirds shaded. Here's a second circle with two-thirds shaded. Three circles and four circles with two-thirds shaded. So I have two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. The denominators are the same, so I add the numerators. Two plus two plus two plus two is eight, and the denominator is three, so I have eight-thirds. I can also count the shaded parts. Beginning with the first circle, I have one, two parts shaded. Move to the next circle and count, three, four. Continue counting with the third circle, five, six. And the last circle, seven, eight. The circles are divided into thirds, and so we have eight thirds. Again, I can change eight thirds to a mixed number by dividing, like we did in the last section, or I can use pictures. Since the denominator is three, I'm gonna draw a circle and divide my circle into three parts. I'll shade and count. One, two, three. Draw a second circle with three parts. Shade and continue counting. Four, five, six. Draw another circle with three parts and continue counting. Seven, eight. So I have eight thirds shaded. Notice that's two holes and the last circle has two out of three parts shaded, and so we have two and two thirds. Our second model for multiplication of rational numbers is looking at multiplication as part of an area. In part A, we're multiplying one half times three fifths. I'm gonna draw a rectangle, and I wanna focus on the three fifths first. So I divide my rectangle into five equal parts, and I shade three of those parts to represent three-fifths. I'm multiplying by one-half, so I want to look at only half of that. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line across here to represent the half. Now I want to look at where my half and my three-fifths overlap. 
So notice I've shaded the three parts where those overlap. I have three parts shaded. My rectangle is now divided into 10 parts, and so we have 3 tenths for our answer. Look at part B. We have 1 fourth times 2 thirds. Again, I'm going to focus on the second number first. So draw a rectangle, divide your rectangle into three equal parts. Since the denominator of the second fraction is three, shade two of those parts to represent two thirds. The first fraction is one fourth. So I'm going to divide a rectangle horizontally into four different parts. And I only want to look at one of those four parts. Think about where the 1 fourth and the 2 thirds overlap. There are two sections where they overlap. My rectangle is now divided into 12 sections. And so our fraction is 2 over 12. Our fraction will simplify. 2 goes into itself one time and 2 goes into 12 six times. And so our final answer is 1 sixth. Always be sure to simplify when you multiply. Next, we have our definition for the multiplication of rational numbers. When we multiply rational numbers, we multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominators. And then always remember to simplify at the end. In example three, five-sixths of a population of a city are college graduates. And seven-elevenths of these college graduates are female. We want to know what fraction of the population is female college graduates. So I multiply my two fractions together. I have 5 6 times 7 11. Multiply your numerators. 5 times 7 is 35. Multiply the denominators. 6 times 11 is 66. And 35 over 66 does not simplify. We'll look at some more multiplication problems as we continue with this section. But first, let's talk about the properties of multiplication of rational numbers. First, we have our closure property. If I multiply two rational numbers, I get a rational number. Second, we have our commutative property. Remember, changing the order of multiplication does not change the result. Third, we have our associative property of multiplication. When I change the grouping for the factors, that doesn't change the result when I multiply. Four, we have our multiplicative identity. Anytime I multiply a number by one, I get that number. We can distribute with our rational numbers. When we multiply by zero, our answer is zero. And we have a new property for multiplication of rational numbers. It's called the multiplicative inverse property of rational numbers. So if I have a rational number a over b, the multiplicative inverse, or what you may know as the reciprocal, is the unique rational number b over a, such that when I multiply a over b times b over a, I get one. Notice the reciprocal is taking our fraction and flipping that fraction. So find the multiplicative inverse for each of the following rational numbers if we can. In part A, we have 2 thirds. The reciprocal of that would be 3 over 2. Flip your fraction to find the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse. For part B, the reciprocal of negative 2 over 5 would be 5 over negative 2. However, remember, we typically do not leave a negative in the denominator of the fraction. So I'm going to rewrite that as negative 5 over 2. For part C, we have 4. Well, we can rewrite that as 4 over 1. When I flip my fraction to find the multiplicative inverse, I get 1 over 4. Now look at part D. Part D, we have 0. I can rewrite 0 as 0 over 1 or 0 over 2 or 0 over 3. All of those give me 0. When I flip the fraction, I get 1 over 0. But we talked earlier this semester that we cannot divide by 0. And so this one is not possible. And last in part E, we have 6 and 1 half. To find the multiplicative inverse of a mixed number, 
I first need to change the mixed number to an improper fraction. So I have six wholes. My whole is divided into two parts, so I multiply by two, plus I have one more part divided by our denominator of two. Six times two is 12, plus one is 13. Bring down your denominator of two. The multiplicative inverse of 13 over two would be two over 13. A bicycle is on sale at three-fourths of its original price. The sales price is $330, and we want to know what was the original price. The three-fourths of its original price tells me I need to multiply three-fourths and the original price. Now, I don't know what the original price is, so I'm going to call it X. So three-fourths times X equals the sale price of 330 to solve for x, I multiply by the reciprocal of 3 fourths. That would be 4 thirds. If I multiply the left side by 4 thirds, I also have to multiply the right side by 4 thirds. On the left side, I have a 3 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator. These will cancel out. The same thing happens with the 4s on the left side. A 4 in the numerator and a 4 in the denominator will cancel out. That leaves me with 1x, or x. 330 is understood to be over 1, so I multiply the numerators. 330 times 4 is 1320. Multiply the denominators. 1 times 3 is 3. And 1320 divided by 3, I use my scratch paper, is 440. So the original price was $440. Now, let's look at multiplication with mixed numbers. We have two ways that we can multiply with mixed numbers. First, we can use improper fractions. So let's multiply each of the following by using improper fractions. In part A, we have two and a half times two and a half. First, I change these to improper fractions. So two and one half, I have two wholes. My whole is divided into two parts, so I multiply by two, and I have one more part, and don't forget that denominator of two. My next fraction is also two and a half. I have two wholes. My whole is divided into two parts, so I multiply by two, plus one more part, divided by two. Two times two is four, plus one is five. Bring down that denominator. And we see the same thing in that second fraction. Two times two is four, plus one is five, and bring down that denominator. Now I can multiply my numerators. Five times five is 25. Multiply the denominators. Two times two is four. And so our answer is 25 fourths. Look at part B. We have three and two fifths times three and three fourths. So three and two fifths, to change that to an improper fraction, I have three wholes. My whole is divided into five parts, so I multiply times five, plus two more parts, and bring down that denominator. Times, in the next mixed number, I have three wholes. My whole is divided into four parts, so I multiply times four, plus three more parts, divided by four. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 makes 17, and bring down your denominator. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15, and bring down your denominator. Now here I can go ahead and multiply my numerators, 17 times 15, and then multiply the denominators. But my numbers get big, and I like to simplify things as much as possible as soon as possible. Notice that 5 and 15 have a common factor. 5 goes into itself one time, and 5 goes into 15 three times. I can only simplify from top to bottom. Now I can multiply. 17 times 3 is 51, and 1 times 4 is 4. My answer then is 51 over 4. The other way that we can multiply with mixed numbers is by using the distributive property. 
In example seven, we're gonna multiply each of the following using the distributive property. In part A, I have two and one half times two and one half. Two and one half, I can rewrite as two plus one half. Do that for both fractions. When I multiply here, I take the first two and I multiply the first two times the second parenthesis. Notice my first parenthesis has a plus sign, so I'm going to add, and I multiply one half times the second parenthesis. And now I distribute. Two times two is four. Then I multiply two times one half. So I'm gonna come off to the side, actually I'm gonna to come to the top, and multiply. Two is understood to be two over one, and I multiply times one half. Multiply the numerators, two times two is two, and one times two is two. Two divided by two is one. So two times one half is one. Plus one half times two, the order that I multiply doesn't matter. So one half times two is also one. And then last we have one half times one half. Again, I'm gonna come off to the side, up to the top here and multiply. One half times one half, Multiply the numerators, one times one is one, and two times two is four. So one half times one half is one fourth. Add your whole numbers, four plus one plus one is six. Bring down the plus one fourth, and six plus one fourth is six and one fourth. This is the same answer that we got for example six part A, but this answer is written as a mixed number. Now, let's look at part B. Three and two fifths, I can rewrite as three plus two fifths. I'm multiplying times three and three fourths. I can rewrite three and three fourths as three plus three fourths. Now, I multiply the first three times my second parenthesis. Notice the first parenthesis has a plus, and I multiply two fifths times the second parenthesis. Distribute the three, three times three is nine. Then come off to the side and multiply. Three is understood to be three over one, and I'm multiplying times three fourths. Multiply the numerators, three times three is nine, and one times four is four, that gives us nine fourths. Three times three fourths then is nine fourths. Then I distribute the two fifths. So I have two fifths times three. I'm gonna come off to the side and multiply. Remember three is understood to be over one. Multiply your numerators, two times three is six. Multiply the denominators, five times one is five. So two fifths times three is six fifths. Last, I multiply two fifths times three fourths. Multiply your numerators, two times three is six. Multiply the denominators, five times four is 20. Now six over 20 will simplify, but I'll wait and simplify later in the problem. Bring down your whole, and I need a common denominator for my fractions. The common denominator here would be 20. Rewrite each of your fractions with that common denominator of 20. Four times five would make 20 in the bottom of the second term. If I multiply the denominator by five, I multiply the numerator by five, and nine times five is 45. Move to the next fraction. Five times four would make 20 in the denominator. If I multiply the bottom by four, I have to multiply the numerator by four. Six times four is 24. And then the last fraction already has that denominator of 20, so I bring down my numerator. Bring down your whole. Add your numerator since the denominators are alike. 45 plus 24 plus six is 75. And bring down that denominator. Bring down your nine plus. 75 over 20 simplifies. Five goes into 75 15 times. And five goes into 20 four times. Bring down your nine and your plus. 15 fourths is an improper fraction. So I'm gonna change it to a mixed number. Four goes into 15 three times with three left. That tells me I have three wholes and three parts. 
So I have three wholes that I'm adding plus three out of four parts. Nine plus three is 12, bring down the three fourths, and 12 plus three fourths would be 12 and three fourths. In the next video, we'll pick up with dividing.